All right, good evening and uh, welcome to our our meeting this evening and uh, certainly want to take this opportunity to welcome those who are streaming from the comforts of home. And I'm sure it's a great place to be right now with uh, certainly this uh, snowstorm. So members of council, roll call. Uh, all members are here and present. Uh, and um, so I'll again, call the meeting to order. First and foremost, as uh, we get started, um, I'd like to report out that uh, we had a closed meeting that uh, was held earlier this evening at 5.30 p.m. in accordance with, and as permitted uh, by section 239.2C of the Municipal Act 2001. At this meeting, the council received uh, an update uh, and provided direction and administration regard regarding potential acquisitions of land. Immediately following the in-camera meeting, a closed personnel a committee meeting was held in accordance with section 239.2B and D. At this meeting, council received an update regarding identifiable individuals and town employees and labor relations. So now I'll call upon uh, a moment of silence uh, and uh, and then uh, stand for our national anthem. All right, uh, for the land acknowledgement, land acknowledgement, uh, we are, uh, uh, we did uh, the land acknowledgement uh, earlier uh, at earlier meetings, and so we'll move right into any disclosure or pecuniary interest on the agenda as presented to you this evening. Hearing none, we are now going to go to the minutes uh, of the regular council meeting of December thirteenth, twenty twenty two. The public council meeting, December 13th, 2022, ZBA at 12106 Tecumseh Road. Public council meeting, December 13th, 2022, the Curtis Strain. And the special council meeting, December 13th, 2022, committee and board appointments. And the recommendation is that council uh, meeting, the council meetings and special council meeting were duplicated and delivered to the members be adopted as presented to you this evening. Deputy Mayor Bichetti moves constitutional support. On those minutes, any errors or omissions? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Members of Council, we have no supplementary agenda um, adoption tonight, no delegations. So we are now going to move into communications uh, for information. We have items one through five. If I could have a motion to receive said communications. Councilor Higginson, thank you. Councilor Houston, support. All in favor? Oppose? That's carried. Is there any communications that council would uh, like to um, address? Hearing none, we'll move on to um, reports. First report is from our chief administrative officer uh, and people and culture. 
And it's on our business improvement area, MOU. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to report to you that uh, we have been working with the um, Tecumseh Business Improvement Area for quite some time now, uh, developing a memorandum of understanding uh, for um, basically outlining town services to the BIA and BIA responsibilities uh, uh, within their area of improvement um, so that uh, for greater clarity and, and uh, to avoid misunderstandings about what is and isn't covered uh, through the town and what they are ex are expected uh, to achieve. So I think that um, has now come to uh, a, a form of an MOU uh, that everyone is happy with and um, and that the uh, board met last uh, Wednesday of uh, of the um, uh, BIA uh, and the uh, they found the document to be acceptable and are prepared to sign it. So we bring it to you this evening uh, for your consideration and authorization to uh, to support that uh, MOU. Further, um, in consultation uh, with Councillor Houston, who's our non-voting member on the Board of Management for the BIA, we felt that it might be a good uh, initiative to have some support uh, to the new board of the BIA uh, to assist them in, in uh, prioritizing for their upcoming budget year. Uh, so uh, we approached uh, Foresight uh, Consulting uh, the same firm that will be assisting us with part of our strategic planning at the council uh, to see if uh, uh, certain provisions could be made to uh, have a couple of strategic planning sessions with the BIA board to help them with that prioritization exercise. Uh, they were able to put uh, together a quick uh, letter proposal and um, that was uh, sent over to the BIA. That also found favor uh, with the board uh, last week. And uh, they we basically uh, are proposing here this evening uh, that um, we support uh, this exercise uh, to the tune of 50% uh, in the order of $1,600 uh, to be funded from the 2023 CAO professional services budget. So that is my report to you this evening and I'm happy to take any questions. All right, thank you, Mark. Any uh, any questions or comments? Go ahead, uh, Councillor Houston. Uh, thank you, Worship. I'm I'm happy to move the report, and I'll make uh, you know uh, some comments once I have a seconder. Okay, thank you. Second by Councillor Higginson. Go ahead, uh, uh, Councillor Houston. Uh, thank you, and and through you to uh, the CAO. Uh, certainly happy to support this, and I think the MOU, and I know the the BIA feels as though the MOU. Uh, does um, complete and achieves all of the uh, items that they were looking for in more formalizing the agreement with the town. Uh, I do believe that there is a, a great opportunity for the BIA and the town to work together collectively uh, on some great projects. And uh, I, I also feel as though the strategic planning that they will undergo will be extremely valuable um, just to set in level set all the new members and uh, uh, put them on, you know, a good course for the next term. So um, I, I know they're pleased. I'm pleased. So I just want to say thank you to you too for um, uh, getting this to the finish line. So thank you. Yeah, before I take further questions, I just want to extend my thanks to you, uh, uh, Council Houston, for your work. And I know this has been something that's been on the books for uh, for a while and, uh, to, you know, to see it through and showing some uh, leadership and, and some guidance and also to uh, to our CAO. And uh, uh, I know it wasn't easy at times but in the conversations, but I think this is a great opportunity to build a real strong relationship with our business community. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I too want to thank uh, Councillor Houston. I know he's worked on it for years and finally it's here in, in front of us. Uh, so continue with the good work. Uh, there's a new board there with the BIA, and I'm looking forward to the exciting things that they they bring forward and partner with the town. All right, question or comments? None. Then uh, on the report, all in favor? Opposed, if any, that is carried. All right, we'll move on to uh, development services. Uh, and... Uh, uh, it's the Development Services 202301 Zoning Bylaw Amendment, and that's for 13931 Riverside Drive scheduling of a public meeting. Mr. Jeffrey, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and good evening, members of council. Um, if we could turn it to attachment one, please. 
So uh, LG, LJB Family Holdings uh, owns a roughly 0.3 acre parcel that's outlined in red uh, on, on the screen, um, situated on the south side of Riverside Drive, just east of Arlington Boulevard. And the property is currently occupied by a single unit dwelling. They're proposing a rezoning from a residential type 2 R2 zone to a site-specific residential type 2 R2-8 zone. And that uh, site-specific zoning would permit a one-story, two-unit dwelling um, that would have the built form of a, a semi-detached, so side-by-side. -side. Uh, and the zoning would also allow for the future severance of that dwelling such that it would be on, each unit would be on its own lot. Um, the current R2 zone permits single unit dwellings only. Um, it should be noted that uh, the proposed dwelling uh, will, however, comply with all the yard provisions contained in the R2 zone. So all the, the yard, the setbacks, the front yard, side yard, and, and rear yard um, minimum requirements of that zone. Uh, attachment two shows the, the proposed site, site plan. And you can see the, the two units there, they're uh, proposed 2,600 uh, square, square feet in area each. Uh, each has its own uh, separate access. Um, and if you turn it to attachment three, you'll see the architectural renderings and how it has the appearance uh, of a single unit dwelling from the front with the exception of the additional access. Uh, and that's important later on when I go through the, the, the official plan policies. Um, attachment four shows the surrounding land uses. Uh, yellow indicates low density residential, so it's uh, predominantly low density residential surrounding the subject property. The exceptions are a small commercial lot uh, to the west um, and a private school and, and a church along the east side of St. Mark's. The provincial policy statement, county official plan, and the town official plan, and you've heard me say this before, uh, all encourage efficient use of land. They encourage a, a range and mix of housing, um, and they also encourage residential intensification. And, and this proposal achieves each of those objectives. Um, the town official plan has an additional requirement though that in stable residential areas such as this one, um, that it must meet the requirements of the criteria contained in th subsection 318 of the official plan, which is the land use compatibility section. And we've done a, a review of that section. We believe that uh, the design meets those, those criteria. So in, in general, it, we believe it's, uh, in keeping with the uh, the intent of the PPS, it conforms to the county official plan into the town official plan. But the next step is, is to hold a, a public meeting to hear from any interested neighbors or uh, stakeholders and agencies with respect to the proposal. So uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, we're recommending uh, the scheduling of a public meeting on uh, Tuesday, February 28th, uh, 2023 at 5 p.m. Uh, in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act to um, uh, hear from interested stakeholders on the proposal in bylaw amendment. Those are my comments, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Jeffrey. Any questions or comments? Then a motion then that uh, uh, to authorize a, a public meeting. I said date moved by Councilor Jobin, supported by Councilor Houston. All in favor? Oppose if any of that is carried. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to um, Again, development services, uh, 2023-02. That's the Tecumseh uh, Road Main Street Community Improvement Plan for 12021 Tecumseh Road. Go ahead. Your mic. My apologies. Uh, 2461415 Ontario Limited and Tony Nemi uh, are the, the owners of a commercial building at uh, 12021 Tecumseh Road. Uh, and you'll see on attachment 1A that it's situated on the south side of Tecumseh Road, um, and it's uh, just east of, of Shawnee Road. And you can see it highlighted in yellow there. That's the uh, the, the property. And it's within that uh, area outlined in red, which is the Tecumseh Road Main Street Commercial Improvement, uh, commercial, uh, improvement Plan area. Um, the building is currently occupied by general and uh, professional offices. And they're proposing uh, an addition to this building, uh, a single story addition, uh, 2,600 square feet in area uh, to the existing building. And that addition uh, can be seen uh, on attachment two. But before going to attachment two, attachment one B just gives you a, a zoom in of the, the current building uh, and, and lot. And that addition is going to occur underneath a second story. So which currently is um, 
you know, currently there's a, an access underneath the second story. So that's where this addition is taking place. On attachment two, you'll see the preliminary site plan. And that addition is, is um, proposed in orange. That's the area of the, the proposed addition. And it's 2,600 square feet in areas I mentioned. They've applied under the financial incentive programs of the Tecumseh Road Commercial Improvement uh, Planning Area for planning application and permit fee grant in the amount of $2,000 and a development charges grant in the amount of $23,998. Um, and <clears throat> council will recall that the Tecumseh Road CIP um, ha has financial incentives that are uh, intended to help revitalize this area and to encourage both private and public investment. And uh, the proponent is taking advantage of those incentives. The $2,000 planning application uh, grant represents the, the cost of the, the estimated cost of the building permit application associated with this addition. Um, which is actually $2,730, but there's a cap of $2,000 for this grant program. And the development charge grant is 100% of the estimated development charges for the addition, which is $23,998. Administration has reviewed the proposal and evaluated against the criteria of the Tecumseh Road Main Street CIP. Uh, and we support the application and recommend that, that it be deemed eligible. Uh, and approved in accordance with section 11.3, section five of the CIP. So the, so the next uh, steps are upon council approval, uh, making this eligible, uh, the pro proponents will have a six month period in which to start the, the addition uh, and a one year uh, period in which to complete the proposed works. And once those works are completed and inspected, and we've deemed that the CIP requirements have been met, the grants will be issued. So, Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, the recommendation is that the grant application for uh, the Tecumseh Road Main Street Community Improvement Plan Financial Incentive Program for the property located at 1202021 Tecumseh Road be deemed eligible and approved for, uh, firstly, the planning application and permit fee grant program in the amount of $2,000, and secondly, for the development charges grant program in the amount of $23,998. Uh, and that's in relation to the design and building permit application for the proposed construction of an addition to the existing commercial building on the subject property, all of which is in accordance with section 11.35 of the CIP. That's my comments, Mr. Mayor, I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Jeffrey. This is, uh, I think, a marvelous project and uh, the NEMIs uh, um, have done tremendous work and really kickstarting a lot of the development in that area with the old Torina site and now the old St. Uh, Cecile site. And uh, I didn't realize that full access to, uh, to Shawnee and the parking lot extension and so forth. Again, adding a lot more parking, you know, in, in that corridor. Um, I think this is uh, uh, an absolute uh, uh, beautiful project. And then you can see what he's done with the Torino building and surrounding areas and what's, what's going to take place in that area. I think it's, uh, you know, it's really, um, they need to be commended for that. So. Um, so I'm looking for council's pleasure on, on it. Uh, uh, the recommendation is that the grant application for the Tecumseh Road Main Street Community Improvement Plan CIP financial incentive program for the property located at 12021 Tecumseh Road, roll number, a whole lot of numbers, uh, be deemed eligible and approved for the uh, planning application and permit fee grant program in the amount of $2,000 and the development charge grant program in the amount of $23,998 in relation to the design and building permit application for the proposed construction of an addition to the existing commercial building on the subject property, all of which is in accordance with section 11.35 of the CIP and with uh, development uh, services 202302 be, be, uh, be adopted. Councillor uh, uh, Houston and Councillor Tonio support. All in favor? Or I should say any questions or comments. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, to you, uh, to Chad, the proposal here in terms of the incentive, is that pertaining to the new construction or the existing building? Because right now there's a Academy St. Cecile and there's some businesses commercial on the first floor. Is, is that being done? Because I saw in the grant application talking about a sidewalk cafe grant. So I'm not sure if that's a new business that's opening up or is that part of something that they're doing? 
Oh, th through you, Mr. Mayor, to the Deputy Mayor, uh, the the pro the uh, proposed uh, grant is is strictly for the development charges rebate. So it's the cost of the, the development charges associated with the proposed addition, and the cost of the building permit fees is also associated with that addition. And that addition is to to house further um, office uses. I, I did notice, like I say, sidewalk cafe. So I thought there's a new business that he's proposing there for the part of the grant application there. I think there's financial summary attachment 4A. Attachment 4A under incentive. And it was number seven, sidewalk cafe grant program, $12,000. Okay. Through, through Mr. Mayor, that's the Deputy Mayor. Uh, yeah, I apologize for the confusion. That's the, the maximum amount that's allocated uh, to, to each program every year. So that's $12,000 that's been allocated to the Sidewalk Cafe grant program. But that uh, program um, isn't being uh, applied for under this proposal. Okay, okay. thank you for the okay. clarification. Okay. Go ahead, Councillor uh, Higginson. Thank you very much. Uh, and through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, I, I appreciate the last conversation because it kind of leads into my question. It doesn't, this um, uh, approval doesn't preclude them from applying for any of the additional CIP incentives in that program provided that they meet the eligibility and, and are within the, the limits, correct? Through Mr. Mayor to Councilor Higginson, uh, that, that's correct. There is a, a cap of $100,000 per property. So they could take advantage of any program up to a $100,000 limit. Further questions or comments? Then on the recommendation, moved by Councillor Houston, supported by Councillor uh, Tonio. No further questions or comments. All in favor? Oppose if any. That's carried. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to, uh, we're still with Development Services 2023-03. That's the uh, Tecumseh Transit Service, TTS, one-year extension of uh, transit delivery and maintenance services agreement with First Canada. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. So council will recall that uh, very recently the Tecumseh Transit uh, was operating as an on-demand pilot, uh, on-demand system as a pilot program from March 28th to December 31st. And uh, upon the completion of that program, a uh, report was written to council recommending that it re revert back to its fixed route Mondays to Fridays and on-demand on Saturdays. Uh, council agreed with that recommendation. And also uh, as part of that recommendation authorized uh, administration to negotiate uh, with First Canada ULC, uh, an extension to the contract uh, for operating uh, our, our transit buses, operating and maintaining our transit buses uh, until the end of uh, this year. So uh, December 31st, 2023. Um, as you may know, the town manages uh, the service and, and owns two buses, but First uh, Canada ULC uh, operates and maintains those buses for us. And they've been doing that ever since 2009. Um, and there have been a couple of extensions to their contract throughout that period. I mean, this one we are recommending uh, because um, we've we've just come out of this on-demand pilot project, um, and we're implementing this hybrid service model. Um, so we don't believe it's feasible uh, to recommend a change in service delivery provider at this time. Uh, we have a, a sound relationship with First Student ULC. And uh, there's a, a high level of satisfaction by the, the transit riders with the bus drivers. So it, the other uh, consideration was that we're anticipating discussions to be held over uh, the upcoming year with the budding municipalities about uh, transit delivery. So given this uncertainty, we didn't want to go beyond a one-year extension. So recommending a one-year extension um, to the contract with First Canada Limited and uh, the recommendation, Mr. Mayor, formally is that um, this report be received and that a bylaw authorizing execution of an amending agreement to the existing transit delivery and maintenance services agreement between the town uh, and First Canada ULC to facilitate a one-year extension for the period January 1st, 2023 to December 31st, 2023 be adopted. And that uh, agreement and bylaw uh, are on the uh, council agenda tonight for consideration. All right, thank you, Mr. Jeffrey. Any questions or comments? 
on the recommendation. Move. Okay, move. Councilor Houston, Councilor Jobin, support. Uh, no, go ahead. Questions, Councilor Houston. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Through you to to Chad. Um, I I look forward to the possibility and you know the discussions of uh, what the uh, our system, what a more regional system you know may look like uh, in those discussions that we'll have this year. Um, I, I know I've mentioned it before, uh, but uh, the, the question I have is, would we have uh, trip data for the uh, the amount of um, uh, transit Windsor acceptance passes or, or, or like we, we accept um, uh, transit Windsor uh, through our system, right? Would we, we, would we have all of the data of how many of those fares that we accept on our end? Through you, Mr. Mayor, we, we do have that data and we, we do accept transfers from the Transit Windsor service. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, so, 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 so my only comment would be, I, you know, I, I know we are having, you know, regional discussions. Uh, I've, I've mentioned it before. Uh, I, I'd really like to see Transit Windsor, you know, reciprocate that, um, you know, although I do feel a lot of the residents who are taking Transit Windsor are coming into our municipality. They are our residents. Um, so, uh, you know, that that is something, you know, great that we're doing for ours. But I would just like to see, you know, Transit Windsor reciprocate on that end. So I don't know, it, you know, if, if a, a council letter may be helpful or required um, to kind of formally ask or kick off any of those discussions. Um, I'll, I'll leave my, you know, comments there with you. Um, and, uh, you know, as I mentioned, I look forward to, you know, the discussions, you know, with our neighbors over the next coming months. I can be so bold. Uh, we, we've had those discussions before, but uh, it'd be kind of nice to have a real partner that would say, hey, you know, let's try it, see how it goes. And and uh, and uh, so um, I, I think under uh, when we have our strategic plan and so forth, I think we can have a more wholesome uh, discussion in terms of um you know the whole issue but there's a lot there's a lot at stake here and in particular by by uh having a chance that we lose our grant uh and uh the cost of providing the service uh would go up dramatically and i think uh you know all of that has to be uh taken in consideration but i would I, I would surmise that a, a goodwill would be to accept our transfers and uh, we can always try again but it's it seems that uh, that partner is it's it's all about us 100% and and not looking at uh, maybe the good, greater good but i think there's other opportunities with the grant that we did receive for the electrification of our service our bus service with uh, certainly the lakeshore our neighbors there i think there's a there is interest of of um of having that conversation you know in that area but I, I I I hear you, but um, you know you got to have a willing partner on both sides. Thank you very much, and through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I I noted that uh, I feel like a broken record tonight mentioning this several times, but um, that that the we're looking at a four percent increase in in uh, the cost of this, and and I imagine that we may have gotten somewhat of a a little bit of a break if we had extended it longer beyond um uh, one year. So what is the kind of risk to us? I I know, it, it, respective of those conversations that we're having with regional partners in transit, um, uh, have we accepted that that's just a risk that that we're looking to to sort of financially take? Um, should those conversations last beyond a year we kind of recognize that that those costs may go up and say if we had to extend it beyond this one year to another year through you, mr mayor to Councilor higginson um, that's a possibility and I, I should note that that four percent represents uh both the um the length of the contract it, it considers the length of, the, of the, the contract being only one year typically it's for a greater period of time um, but it also uh, reflects uh, the recent uh, CPI, which is, has been much higher than in the past. Yeah. Okay, further questions or comments? All right, the recommendation. Hmm? Yeah, mover and seconder. All in favor? Opposed, carry.
Thank you, Mr. Jeffrey. Uh, Public Works and Engineering Services. Our P PWES 2023-02 Bridge and Culvert Needs Study. Mr. Bartnick. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, and uh, good evening, uh, members of council. Uh, the report before you this evening uh, does have a recommendation for the report to be received. Uh, the purpose of this study was to assess the town's 16 bridges and culverts that had a span greater than three meters uh, and to prepare a comprehensive plan for improving and maintaining these structures over the next 10 year period. Uh, pursuant to the Public Transportation and Highway Improvement Act, the town is required to undertake an inspection under the direction of a, of a professional engineer for every bridge and culvert with spans greater than three meters at least once every two years. The bridge condition index, uh, often referred to as BCI, uh, is a planning tool that was developed by the Ministry of Transportation as a means of combining the inspection information with the various structure elements of, of into a single value. Uh, the BCI ranges from zero to 100. Uh, there's three categories, poor, fair, and good. Uh, the calculated average BCI value uh, for the town of Tecumseh's bridges in 2022 is 77.7. Uh, this is an indication that the town's bridge and culvert structures are overall uh, in a good condition. Uh, there were two structures uh, that were identified with deficiencies that should be addressed, uh, one being in the one to five year uh, pedestrian bridge number one at a cost of 210,000 and a second bridge in the year six to 10 years uh, structure 1016 and that would be the Collins drain at outer drive at a cost of 235,000. Uh, if there's any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer. Any questions or comments? Okay, so the recommendation uh, that the report PWES 2023-02-22 bridge and culvert needs study uh, structures and span greater than three liters be received. Go ahead, Councilor Donor moves and support Councilor Tonio. All in favor? Opposed? That's carried, thank you. Move on to item number B, which is the P PWES 2022-03 traffic radar speed survey for 2022. Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> uh, this report summarizes the data collected from our radar speed trailers uh, in 2022, which comprised of 17 locations on 14 different streets. Uh, this includes traffic volumes, speed, uh, the average speed, uh, and the 85th percentile speed. Uh, the 85th percentile speed is defined as the speed at or below which 85% of all vehicles are observed to travel. Uh, there were four streets uh, or locations where the 85th percentile speed was greater than 10 kilometers per hour over the speed limit, uh, which is an indicator to increase enforcement act and activities in those areas. Uh, those included Intersection Road, Malden, Shawnee and Southfield. Uh, administration reviews uh, the data collected at each location and provides detailed information to the OPP uh, on when speeding is more prevalent on specific streets, uh, which assists in with their continued enforcement. Uh, in 2022, administration installed the flexible in-road signage uh, for a second year in a row. Uh, these were placed in the center of the road and uh, we identified six targeted locations in 2022. Uh, in 2021, we did a uh, kind of a small study on the effect effectiveness of, the, of these signs. Uh, it was determined that uh, there was a decrease of five kilometers per hour with the average speed, as well as the 85th percentile speed. Um, and these were placed uh, on Arlington, Riverside, Edgewater, Southfield, Shawnee, McNorton, and St. Mark's. Uh, moving forward, uh, Public Works will continue to conduct speed surveys in response to complaints that are received throughout the year, uh, roll out additional in-road traffic calming signage at key locations, uh, and provide traffic data to the OPP to assist with their enforcement activities. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Go ahead, Councilor Tonio. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
I appreciate the data that you're doing and all the work you're doing on that. You know, we, the town has been dealing with traffic issues for a long time. It's one of the biggest uh, complaints that uh, councillors receive. And I believe using data to solve, to get the answers or, or figure out the problem is very important. So I appreciate that you guys done all this work and you continue to collect the data in that area. As you know, uh, that's Shawnee Road, Southfield, Mulberry, Arbor area, due to the new construction of Tecumseh Road has made a little bit of change, which the data has provided. I appreciate that you guys put the uh, speed signs on Shawnee Road. That has made a difference. Just could we just continue to monitor that area? Because with the Banwell roundabout in Windsor, it's kind of increasing that traffic flow in that little area of the residential area of Southfield, Shawnee. So I just request that, you know, we keep monitoring that because you receive a lot of complaints from that area and so do I. So as long as we can stay on top of it and keep the citizens feeling they're safe and we're, we're doing what we can to make sure they have a safe community. Thanks. <clears throat> Yeah, thank you, uh, Councillor. Councillor uh, Higginson. Thank you very much. I'll just I'll echo those comments to just as a, a matter of public course. I'm, I'm knocking on doors. I heard a lot about it. I'm wondering about the uh, how else we use these in-road traffic calming signs. Is it just um, in respect of these targeted locations for speeding and, and where the complaints have come in? Or do we look at things like uh, areas of where we want increased community safety around schools, around parks, around places where kids are kind of walking to and from school with no sidewalks, those sorts of things. Are there are there other areas where we consider placing these um, in road traffic calming signs that are not um, strictly related to um, to speeding complaints? Uh, yes, uh, through you, uh, your worship to Councillor uh, Higgison, a uh, very good question. Uh, so the program, we just kind of started rolling out, uh, I believe in 2021. Uh, we started with a very limited uh, supply of the signs. Um, and as you can imagine, um, we did have a number that kind of walked off on their own. Uh, we had a few that were uh, completely smushed. <laughs> so uh, it has been a challenge uh, with placing them. Um, we've gotten some good feedback, uh, from them. We've also gotten some, uh, negative feedback from them as well. And, um, so, you know, we do have uh, kind of a, a running list of, uh, the areas of concern where we see, uh, continued concerns raised. And so we try to target those areas first. And I think, you know, Southfield, uh, Shawnee, the Riverside drive, uh, areas, uh, where the 85th percentile speed is kind of borderline, uh, you know, between the 10 kilometers to 15 kilometers over the speed limit. Um, when, it come, when it comes down to maybe targeting school zones or, um, you know, uh, zones around parkland, uh, we have uh, added some in the past. Uh, I, I do recall uh, on St. Greg's uh, near some, some of the schools and the, uh, the park there, uh, over on uh, Southfield as well. So these those are locations that we're not adverse to placing those uh, types of devices. Um, so I think we we do have a uh, a number of them that were identified within the the budget that was just passed, and so we've placed our order for for 2023, and uh, we hope to roll those out once winter maintenance activities uh, end in the spring. Uh, any further questions or comments? Scott, go ahead, uh, Councillor Houston, Councillor Jobin, follow. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, to uh, Mr. Bartnick, uh, and, and all, uh, I, I completely agree with what all everything Councillor Toniel has uh, has said. Uh, I think there's a fantastic tool for us to use uh, for for us council members to have. I recently received a complaint about intersection road, right, and I did pass it along to our CAO. Um, not that I did not agree with what the resident was telling me. But now I can completely see what the resident was telling me. And we've got the data to pass along to the OPP um, to go out and fish in a spot that is hot for, um, for speeding. So, um, you know, th thank you to your team. And I know I've had a few inquiries about, hey, how do I get a sign on my road? Because I feel as though there is speeding. So I just think it's, uh, you know, important for us to rely on this. To, to validate and then we can kind of deploy our resources uh, for those issues that come up. So um, thank you for the report. 
Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just one comment to that as well uh, for Council's consideration is, um, you know, we do work very closely with the OPP and um, it's not just the data or the information saying, hey, you know, go out on intersection road. We, act we actually have the data that is broken down by the hour. Uh, as well as the direction. And so we can give them kind of a targeted time frame uh, of when uh, you know the majority of the speeding is taking place. And so they're not, you know, sitting out there at uh, in on inopportune times where you know they may not be catching the speeders. So um, you know, it's a continuous process, but uh, we definitely have a good relationship with the OPP. Go ahead, Councilor Joven. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor. And yes, Phil, to your team, I too can call you when you guys will maybe just pop one out, even in Old Castle Side Road. Um, but it trends, right? People can kind of see them, avoid, and then a few months later, go back and view that it's there and learn the cycle. But nonetheless, we're doing the best that we can. And you guys acknowledge when there's a request from, from me, for sure. So I appreciate that. Um, and it's everywhere. Every municipality has this challenge. Wherever we go, everybody's in a hurry. Um, so just, um, I appreciate your your work in giving us the data so we can keep on this and keep improving our residents and even their own behaviors and how they operate their roads that they pay taxes for in the town they pay taxes to live in. They should race through it and cause havoc. Anyhow, thank you. Go ahead, Councilor Dorner. Uh, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So, uh, Mr. Burning, just like a quick, just to acknowledge it, the data recorded has like the times and directions and that like information is automatically forwarded to the OPP or it has to come through us before. I uh, you, your worship. Um, the data it usually gets downloaded uh, to our systems. Uh, then we kind of filter it through and then we provide that data uh, in a form to the OPP. Okay, any further questions or comments? If not, then a motion to receive the report. Councilor Tonio, Councilor Higginson, all in favor? Always offended that is carried. And we'll move on to, um, again, uh, item C under Public Works, uh, 2023 the County Road 42, County Road 43 improvements, cost sharing agreement with the County of Essex. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Bartnick. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, as council is aware, the, the county is proceeding with improvements to County Road 42 and 43. Uh, phase one is currently under construction and consists of underground works, water, wastewater, and storm on County Road 42 from Manning Road to Banwell. Um, <clears throat> on December 13th of 2022, council received a report uh, from the CAO to endorse the additional funds that were approved by the CAO during the lame duck, lame duck period of the last term of council. Uh, to formalize the cost sharing of the phase one works uh, between the town and the county, an agreement has been prepared outlining each of our uh, proportions of the costs that would be completed by the contractor as well as the consultant. Uh, in general, the town will reimburse the county uh, for construction amounts regarding the installation of the water and the sanitary works, uh, estimated at 17.5% of the total project cost. Uh, so that's roughly about 5.4 million of the $29.97 million project. 17.5% um, <clears throat> of the amount invoiced by the consulting engineer will also uh, be paid for by the town. That includes quality control, contracted men, inspection, excess soils. Um, and these costs uh, would be also related to water and sanitary. Uh, and they're estimated at 327,000 uh, of the total 1.9 million uh, for the consulting fees. Um, do want to note that construction of phase one is anticipated to be completed by the end of uh, 2023. Uh, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. All I can say is carry on. If they would have listened to us way back, it wouldn't have been that this expensive. Go ahead, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor. I know uh, uh, Mayor McNamara at the county, um, I was still surprised as a county trying to convince county council, uh, you know, when we got that tender back, uh, I thought, you know, it's a lot alone hard here as a, our own Tecumseh to, to approve something that's 62% over 
the estimated cost. So from 18 to 29 million at the time where that county council was lame dunk, where the CEO had to make that approval. So I just want council to understand here, it was not a slam dunk. The, that, that was a very difficult decision. And, and you know what, at the end of the day, uh, like Mayor McNamara said, this was due through to the amalgamation a long time ago, and they kept deferring, deferring, deferring. And this is a great example of why you can't do that. Uh, if it would have been done, you know, even 10, 15 years ago, it just sat there and it just sat there. And so I'm, I, I want to thank uh, Mayor McNamara and I know the rest of the County Council for, for supporting us on this endeavor, because this could easily, easily have been said, no, sorry about your luck. Well, we're not approving it. So just a, just a note of uh, keep, keep moving ahead on this. Well, oh, thank you for that. But I, 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 I want to give a shout out to the that gentleman that's sitting there and uh, and the young lady down to my left, and and uh, because I think they prepared us really well, uh, you know, to uh, to bring this forward, and and uh, you know, let's hope that we we can continue and finish all the phases that are required because uh, there's something. Uh, in the neighborhood that's going to create uh, some real havoc and that's uh, the EV plant and uh, you know even to the point where we talked about uh, intersection road and the amount of traffic and speeding there and uh, what is that uh, going to be two years or three years from now so um, I'm sure that uh, Mr. Bartnick you'll put your thinking cap on and and how to be able to control our, our uh, traffic through the community and so forth but um, we have to be you know um, steadfast and, and to make sure that that project continues and uh, not only for the EV plant but the hospital that's coming too on 42 and so it's uh, it's uh, it's you know in my opinion you know full steam ahead and let's keep uh, keep forging it but uh, unfortunate we had to pay uh, uh, extra dollars but I think uh, you know in the long run it had to be done and uh, um, yes, you're right. Mike Galloway, our, our, the CEO of the day at the time, uh, really had, had put his uh, his uh, full reputation, uh, you know, as uh, a lame duck council and that and uh, moved ahead. So kudos to uh, to him as well. Okay, looking for a recommendation. Moved by Councilor Tonio and supported by Councilor Jobin. On the motion, all in favor? Opposed, if any, that is carried. Again, thank you very much. And I believe we're now in line for bylaws, so I'll call upon our uh, our clerk, Mr. OJ, to lead us down the bylaw path. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it is recommended that the uh, the following bylaws to be named and referenced uh, be given first and second reading this evening, and additionally, if deemed appropriate by council this evening, uh, that the following bylaws to be named and referenced uh, also be given third reading and be finally passed this evening, and with the referenced bylaws being uh, bylaw 2023-001, deregulating taxi services, 2023-002, appointments bylaw, clerk appointment, bylaw 2023-003, marriage licensing, repeal marriage ceremony services, 2023-004, self-Talbot Road Drain East and 12th Line Drain Tender Award, bylaw 2023-005, County of Essex Agreement for County Road 42, Phase 1, 2023-006, amending bylaw for bylaw 22. 2022 100 fees and charges 2022 007 zoning bylaw amendment uh 12106 to come see road bylaw 2023 010 committee of adjustment appointments 2023 11 committee of adjustment appointments minor variances 2023 12 property standard committee appointments 2023 13 accessibility advisory committee appointments 2023 014 police service board appointments 2023 015 bia board of management appointments 2023 016 first canada ulc agreement bylaw 2023 017 2023 budget and bylaw 2023-18 BIA Memorandum of Understanding.
So for, for first and second reading uh, by council and consideration for third and final. Thank you very much. I thought we'd get a rise out of the treasurer on the budget, uh, on, on the budget being advanced. But, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Oje. On, uh, on, uh, can I have two readings on the budget? Uh, or on the budget, on all the bylaws. <laughs> <laughs> Deputy Mayor Vicchetti and uh, Councilor Tonio. All in favor? Opposed, if any, that is carried. And then three readings are in order. Moved by Councillor Houston and Councillor Aginson. Move three readings. All in favor? Opposed, if any, that is carried. Before I move on to uh, unfinished business, I want to tonight. Oh, I am sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, for first and second reading only this evening, 2023-008, Intaya Drain, and 2023-009, uh, Branch of South Talbot and Holden Outlet, and that relates to the Meal Bridge uh, for two readings this evening. Moved by Councillor Jobin, supported by Councillor Houston on the two readings. All in favor? Opposed? That is carried. And through you, Mr. Mayor, and and finally, uh, for third reading, third and third reading and final passage this evening is bylaw 2022-052, South Talbot Road East and 12th Line Drain. Moved by uh, moved by Councillor Houston and supported by Councillor Tonio. All in favor? Opposed, if any, that is carried. All right, thank you very much. But before we move on to unfinished business, I know in uh, bylaws we uh, transferred, uh, I guess we'll say transfer power from uh, the uh, the uh, acting clerk to uh, to the clerk. But then I want to I want to take this opportunity to to say thank you, Jen, on behalf of all of us around the table here and certainly our residents. Thank you uh, for uh, keeping us. Uh, moving forward. And uh, so um, I just want to say thank you. Good job uh, or job well done. Okay, unfinished business. All right, new business. Councilor Jobin. Thank you and through you to just members of council in case you don't follow some of the South End um, social media sites, St. Mary's Park has opened up their baseball season registration. Um, also the Sandwich South Historical Society are gonna have a Euchre tournament. I believe it's February 4th. But again, they also have a fantastic social media site so we can keep up with all of their business. Um, but just something a little more serious. I was just through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's a county question about speeding again on county roads. Is it best practice to encourage the residents to submit a petition or would um, the mayor and deputy mayor take it to county council for discussion? You mean if they got complaints on county roads? Um, a speed reduction on a county oh, road. Uh, usually, um, I would uh, bring it here first and have council here, and then we usually uh, send a a recommendation from this council to county council to act on. Okay. Well, we have in the past, and there was an action, and someone said petition is more so what they want, but um, specifically County Road 46 at Manning Road going east and west. North and south, when you come up to it, it goes from 80 to a 60 through the four-way red light. But east and west, it doesn't. It's 80 straight through. And now with increase in traffic and semi-truck traffic, like going 80 through an intersection. And there is some residential houses there. So um, if you could bring that forward again to county council, and then if we aren't successful there, I know some of the residents will be willing to do a, a petition as well, if need be. I, I yeah, I would bring it here, but I, I think, we, you know, we, we, we can do some pre prelim here because I what happens a, a lot of times at the county, uh, even, even county councillors or others, I, I know there's a whole new slew of them there, but in the past they would say, well, how does the town of Tecumseh feel about it? You know, did it come from from uh, from council? Sometimes some of them will say, well, uh, we need to, you know, defer it to their council and then, then we'll act on it. And then there's... And if it's uh, you know speeding, but or speed reduction, usually then the county will say, well, they'll do a um, you know a study to see if there's warrants and so forth. And if it's a stop sign, and and we have been successful with other communities. I know Kingsville uh, and um, uh, had requested a a um, 
a, uh, a more visible stop sign, and, and that was on County Road 23 and 18, and they were able to do that. You know, they 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 recognized all that. But uh, again, depending on where the road and and the amount of traffic, usually they'll they'll want to do a study to say, um, you know, are we impeding the the flow of traffic, as a good example, and and so forth. But um, I'll, I'll uh, certainly defer to Ms. Bartnick, but uh, there, there's a bit of a process to get us to, to that level. No, certainly I understand that. And we have in the past, but I think their study proved to be not necessary, but I think it needs definitely hundred percent to be revisited because an 80 straight through there, I mean, they shouldn't come up to a light with, it should be 60, 60. And then anyway, thanks. Uh, through you, Your Worship, um, to councils uh, for, for consideration. So this issue had come up in, a, in the last number of years, uh, I believe in 2021. And um, the county did go out and do uh, some analysis there. And I think they came back with a recommendation for it to remain at 80. Um, you know, with the newer administration uh, at the county, uh, it wouldn't hurt to kind of re-engage uh, and see if anything has changed. Um, you know, I am aware of whether it's County Road 46 or even 42 in Lakeshore, uh, there are instances where the 80s do dip down to 60 around the signalized intersections. And uh, I believe that might be the case on Manning heading north-south, but not the case heading east-west. So uh, perhaps uh, a further conversation with the administration to see if there could be some further analysis conducted. Okay, much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, if I could, yep. uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Jobin, if you would uh, like uh, administration's assistance in drafting a notice of motion for to bring to this council for consideration of your request, we could then entertain it at the next meeting. And then we'll bring we'll bring it uh, at that level. Then we'll bring it to uh, to county, and then they'll you know they can't say, well, what's your council think about it, or and so forth. So it'll be. I think it adds some weight to it. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I think Councillor Jobin's request would have more validity now that I understand the north-south because we did do it in the municipality of Lakeshore just maybe a year or two ago. We're approaching those intersections. The rationale was we need to slow the traffic down coming to that light. Mm -hmm. And so we, we'll use that argument for there. It makes sense to do it as well there. So we'll, we'll, we'll go through the process in there. Thank you. Any further new business? Go ahead, uh, Councilor Houston. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Just wanted to advise Council that uh, at the BIA, they did hold elections for their new executive. So uh, uh, Leo DeMars is the new chair. Uh, Travis Dorner is the vice chair. And uh, Sandra Zanet is the treasurer. So they do have a new executive um, there. And I just wanted to advise Council who those members were. Thank you. Any further new business? Then, uh, okay. We have a motion uh, that uh, it's been asked by uh, the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Cities Initiative, Freshwater Health uh, Campaign. And uh, this motion, uh, I'm, I'm bringing it forward. Uh, and it's, yeah, for some reason, I, I disconnected myself. All right, and uh, the motion is, it's a bit lengthy. Um, you bear with me. Uh, it's whereas the town Tecumseh as a member of the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Cities Initiative supports protecting source water, planning for climate change impacts and shoreline resilience, ensuring safe and affordable water services for all our residents and building up a sustainable blue economy of the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence uh, River Basin. Whereas ensuring healthy communities and a strong Economy for Canadians depend on securing Canada's source water, which includes addressing water quality issues, contaminants and pollution, supporting biodiversity and reversing uh, wetland and fish and wildlife habitat loss and improving community knowledge to empower citizens, safeguard this essential resource. Whereas the Freshwater Action Plan and the Great Lakes Protection Initiative it supported uh, were first announced in 2017, um, by the Canadian uh, federal budget uh, with a 44.84 million investment over five years. Whereas the Freshwater Action Plan has combined science and action to address the priorities in the Great Lakes, such as preventing toxic and, and nuisance algae 
enhancing the resilience of coastal wetlands in the Great Lakes, restoring Great Lakes areas concern and supporting Canada's commitment under the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement among other priorities. And whereas a commitment was made by the Liberal Party of Canada in 2021 federal election to strengthen the Fresh Water Action Plan with a historic investment of 1 billion over 10 years to restore and protect large lakes and river systems starting with the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence River Basin. Whereas the federal government only committed 19.6 million of that funding in, in the 2022 budget for the Freshwater Action Plan, falling short on the aforementioned commitment. Whereas the United States have invested 1.8 billion in Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, the GLRI, since 2017, and we'll see accelerated funding uh, with their Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Whereas 2018, University of Michigan study shows that for every dollar of federal spending in G, uh, the Great Lakes uh, resource, projects between 2010 and 16 yielded 3.35 billion in additional economic activity. Whereas nearly half of Canada's population uh, lives in the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence uh, Basin, a region that will continue to see accelerated growth, resulting in greater land and resource use pressure that will further contribute to water availability and quality issues. And whereas the Stockholm Resilience Center recently identified the importance of wetlands as carbon sinks and freshwater role in climate mitigation. Whereas the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Collaborative outlined 30 recommendations to Environment and Climate Change Canada as part of the 10 year 2.2 billion action plan. 2020, 2030 to protect the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Action Plan 2020-2030, addressing shoreline erosion, outdated infrastructure, invasive species, exposure to toxins, beach contamination, following an 18-month consultation with our First Nations, NGOs, and academics and other experts. I've got a whole bunch of whereas, but I'm going to get right to the, uh, you know, now therefore, uh, be it resolved that the town of Tecumseh calls on the federal government to commit their $1 billion and funding over five years for a strengthened freshwater action plan in budget 2023. Be it further resolved that the town of Tecumseh calls on the federal government to guide its freshwater action plan funding to implement recommendations uh, in the action plan in 2030. And be it further resolved that the town of Tecumseh calls on the federal government to direct priority funding under the strengthened freshwater action plan to projects in the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence River Basin and be it further resolved that the town that comes and calls on the federal government to make municipalities eligible for future funding and programs announced under the Strength and Freshwater Action Plan. Be it uh, further resolved that the town that comes and directs its staff to submit this resolution to the federal deputy prime minister and the minister of finance, the minister of the environment and climate change, the parliamentary secretary of the minister of the environment and climate change responsible for the Canada Water Agency and our local uh, members of Parliament. Whew. Yeah, I support. <laughs> Thank. Moved by Deputy Mayor uh, Bichetti and support by Councillor Egginson. On the motion, all in favor? Opposed, if any, that is carried. And just, just to close on that piece, uh, for us in Essex County here, we host the largest freshwater fishery in on the Great Lakes or in North America. Um, and then we have Lake St. Clair, which is um, a gem in itself as a uh, one of the best sport fishing lakes anywhere. And I mean anywhere, including northern Ontario, northern Quebec, anywhere. Uh, and so those are very, very important assets that we have we're very fortunate to live in those in in, in those, that basin uh but again uh when i made reference in there about the blue economy um it's just in ontario alone along the shorelines and that it's about a six billion dollar contribution to the gdp of the country so you you can see how important it is for us to protect that asset and in the small amount that what we did here in Tecumseh to protect our shoreline just uh, 18 months ago were um, out of uh, reserves. We took uh, half a million dollars 
uh, to beef up our shoreline here to protect our, our, our homes. And so that came from us, not a grant from the, any of the governments and so forth. We took that out of our reserves to protect the assets of our municipality. And so you can see how important it is for us if upper levels of government are going to commit X number of dollars over a period of time, then they ought to be allocating those dollars to, to, to benefit, uh, um, you know, our benefit. And, uh, you know, when we got a hundred mile peninsula or 160 mile peninsula here in Essex County, including the city of Windsor, uh, uh, very important for us to protect that shoreline. And the Suzik report, I think we're all waiting for it, I think to come out and which is coming soon. Um, you know, some of the, Estimates that, uh, especially in the Lake Erie area, and that they're talking close to a billion dollars itself, you, you know, to uh, protect our shorelines. So, um, it, I think this is really, really important, and uh, uh, it's an opportunity for the Great Lakes, the mayors of the Great Lakes, to, to um, lobby our federal government uh, to make sure that at least we keep up to what the United States is uh, actually spending. So, on the motion, all in favor. What was the penny that's carried? Thank you. Confirmatory bylaw is in order. Moved by Council Tonio, supported Council Jobin, uh, that do we uh, confer the uh, the proceedings of this meeting this evening on three readings. All in favor? Oppose the penny that is carried. And with that, um, I believe that adjournment's in order. Council Dorner. And uh, Councillor Houston, all in favor? Oppose if any, that is carried. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you.